Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media. I've been experimenting with AI now for months and I found tons of interesting use cases for digital marketing, including some that are specific to SEO. So after finding lots of these, uh, it was tough for me to narrow them down. I'm gonna demo for you now some of the more uh, practical and fast and actionable um, applications and use cases use AI for SEO. Ready? Let's jump in. Okay, for my first use case, I'm going to do the one that you probably were expecting when you clicked, which is to uh, find SEO on-page uh, edits uh, that will uh, improve the rankings of a specific URL. So our hypothesis is something like this. Every page that ranks, ranks for lots of phrases. But a lot of those phrases really aren't even on the page. If I can find the phrases for which a page ranks but are not included in the content, I can then edit that page to incorporate those phrases and better indicate its relevance helping it rank for the you know, primary target key phrase, but also to rank higher for many more phrases because I'll be doing good semantic SEO by incorporating the, the other phrases uh, based on clues that I got from a tool. I'm gonna use this tool. I'm inside Google Search Console. In the search results report, uh, I just went to a page that ranks. This is a page about uh, making social media videos. And there's, it's not getting lots of traffic, but uh, it's a keyword focused article. Uh, I wanna find all the phrases for which uh, it ranks, but not on, aren't on the page. To do that, I'm simply going to exclude the branded queries, stay focused on that single URL. These are the filters, you can see them at the top. Uh, and then I'm gonna export. Every time I see an export button, now I get excited. I'm gonna export. Then I'm gonna import those into ChatGPT. Uh, I have a ChatGPT Plus account. I have uh, advanced data analysis turned on, which allows me to upload files and do analysis based on files. It'll do deeper analysis, it'll draw charts, uh, I can give it CSV files. Here's the first prompt. I'm giving you Google Search Console data, showing the search performance of a single URL, can you analyze? I do that a lot. Uh, it analyzes, it's working. My next prompt is actually uh, going to help uh, clean up the file because there's so many closely related phrases in there, it's kind of a mess. So I'm gonna ask it first, uh, or tell it, you're an expert SEO who's highly proficient at keyword analysis, merge the rows with very similar queries into a single rows with a single representative marketing key phrase. As you do so, for each row, combine the data for impressions and clicks, average the data for click-through rate and average position, and then provide a link to download. I always wanted to provide a link to download. You can see I take this link and then I click it and I look at it and you know, does this look good? Looks pretty good, <laughs> this is fine, right? These are all the phrases for which that page ranks. Cool, right? That's just what I expected, good, good starting point. Now I wanna give it the page. Here is the web page for the data that you just analyzed. Evaluate this page as keyword relevance, uh, keyword usage and keyword frequency for all those key phrases in that data set. And then I copy and paste in the page, that's it, right? So it immediately comes back and does some text pre-processing, I'm not sure what that means, some key phrase extraction, okay, good, sounds good. My next prompt is the action, right? It's the impact. Uh, suggest edits to this page that would help it rank higher by better indicating its relevance for key phrases in the data set. But I want you focus on recommendations for including the phrases that are not used on the page but do appear in the data set, right? What did I miss? And now make suggestions that improve the flow and clarity of the content. I want it to read nicely, ChatGPT. Don't do any keyword stuffing. I want it to feel and sound good, right? As, and also improve the keyword relevance. Please highlight the recommended changes. How does it look? Looks pretty good to me. This copy reads pretty well. Look through. How about these? I'm fine with these. If you read this, pause this video and take a look at this, you will likely conclude that this isn't bad copy from any perspective, from the conversion perspective, engagement, from audience sensitivity and empathy, but also obviously keyword relevance. That's the kind of thing that makes sense to me in SEO. That's, that's a great application for ChatGPT. It like takes a bunch of data, examines a piece of content, finds the gaps and make recommendations. You could also do this by hand, but it would be very time consuming. For my next prompt, right? For my next use case, I want you to optimize uh, my content to, to get greater clicks, right? More click-through rate. SEO, people say it's about ranking. Yes, it's about ranking, but even more important than ranking is getting clicks. Uh, you've got content that ranks, but doesn't get the click-through rates that you think it would based on how high it ranks. In other words, if we could find the, 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 the URLs in your body of work that have lower than expected click-through rates based on their search position, you could maybe improve those title tags so that they look show up better in search and like 
uh, improve the click-through rate without even improving the rankings. You can imagine. For this, we're going to use two sources of data. We're going to use uh, Google Search Console as well as uh, Google Analytics because uh, there's a, a, something missing from Search Console. Basically, similar report, uh, although I'm not narrowing it down to just one page. Uh, I'm narrowing it down to one directory. I'm doing I'm a content marketer, so I'm just going to look at the blog. Right? Only look at URLs that contain slash blog. And let's exclude all those branded queries, our company's Orbit Media, exclude all the phrases that include the word Orbit. I'm going to export that, and I get this report. So always look at the file first, right? And then clean out all the, I clean out all the ones with zero click because there's plenty of data in here without that. So now I have a list of all the, uh, every article and its click-through rate and its search position. Okay, so uh, that's half the battle, but I don't have the title tags in here. So I have to get that data from my other data source, which is GA4. Uh, this is just the pages and screens report uh, with the primary dimension set to page title and a secondary dimension set to page path, the URL, right? I don't need any of the marketing metrics here. I'm just really looking to map the page title and URLs together. And when I export this file, I got another file. Everything you export from Google Analytics has these first nine rows of comments. AI chokes on that. It's a problem. You just remove that. Remove that, right? You don't need that. Okay, now I'm going to give AI these files. Um, uh, here's the data from Search Console. Can you analyze? Great. Uh, I'm, now I'm giving you data from Google Analytics. Uh, clean it up a little, please. Remove the non-English titles. I've worked on this hard and I'm giving you the shortcuts. Remove all the non-first non language titles. Uh, merge it with the first data set. You know, you can ask it to do other things that will help, you know, clean up the data a little bit, provide a link to download. And then it comes back with a lot of stuff. You know, it asked me questions, how to do this analysis, great. Now I'm gonna download the merged and deduplicated data. And I look at it and it looks good. It looks good. Check the file. I'm fine with this, right? You can see that there's URLs, standardized URLs. It's got the page path. It's like a little more data than it needs, but you've got now the search performance and the title tags. That's what I needed. So here's the next prompt. You're an SEO, you're an expert in analyzing search performance, and you're an expert at the psychology of click-through rates. You want to maximize engagement at a search results page. Which of these pages has a lower than expected click-through rate based on its average search position? So it comes back, draws a chart, not very helpful to me, but down below it actually gets much more interesting. These are the pages that have lower than average click-through rates based on their search position. Look at this one. Click-through rate of 0.02%, even though the average position is like 12. And then it recommended the changes. There we go. There's the current title tag. There's the revised title tag. What do you think? These look pretty good to me. I'm quite happy with these. But this exercise didn't take me very long. And in the end, how much? what would the impact be? Let's ask. How much more traffic per month could this blog attract if the title tag improvements bring all those URLs into the expected range? The answer, 700 clicks a month. Very helpful. Thank you. You actually forecasted the impact. I'm cool with that. Okay, uh, for our next trick, I'm going to have uh, ChatGPT uh, add an FAQ section to an existing page. Uh, this is uh, actually a very simple method. We don't need uh, any special data to do this. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste a web page in with this prompt. The following web page is optimized for the phrase, get ranked higher in Google. It's a phrase that I rank for. It's an article I've updated many times over the years. Super practical article, I highly recommend it. Uh, but it summarizes its keyword relevance and I copy and paste in the content. I'm frequently doing that, right? For this exercise, we can just copy and paste in the content. Other times, I'll actually upload the HTML to a page and it'll look at the other you know, title tags and meta descriptions and such. Then I go to the page, that it, uh, the search results page, search for my primary target key phrase, and it gets people also ask. Oh, expand collapse, expand collapse. I've got a bunch of questions that Google believes are relevant to my target key phrase. Awesome. Copy and paste those. Which of these following questions are not directly answered on that web page? It basically comes back and tells me what I missed. It tells me which questions were not answered in my content. Okay, uh, so you can imagine how this would be uh, useful already, even if I don't want to add an FAQ page or an FAQ section to this article. Uh, I could just go through here and say, whoa, I got some content gaps. I should address these in my article. But in this case, I want to just show you this kind of um, a bit cheesy kind of shortcut, but actually pretty effective. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask it to write a new section. Right, not going to edit the page at all. I'm just going to bulk, just dump in, copy, paste the new section. Um, not my favorite type of SEO, uh, uh, but worthwhile as an experiment. The prompt is simple. Write a new detailed FAQ section that answers the questions that were not directly answered on the current page. Boom. Very simple. Look good? You like these? 
uh, these are these were content gaps. The page didn't answer these questions before. You know, it's, they're now included on the page. So I find that very interesting and think that's an excellent uh, example of the kind of thing that ChatGPT can do. Uh, fundamentally, what am I doing here? I'm giving it content and I'm asking it uh, to evaluate, you know, find gaps in a piece of content against a, a data set and then recommend the improvements. I'm going to do one more for you now, which is a, a, a competitive audit, and uh, it's based on an output from a tool that you all probably heard of. I'm going to use SEMrush, the keyword gap report. Uh, I'm in SEMrush. I'm pretending to be a space launch company, uh, and I've got my home page. Look how I've set all these to be exact URLs, and I've got my competitors' home pages. And when I write, run to compare, it shows me the overlap between my site and their sites uh, just on that one URL. Now, when you scroll down, what you're going to get is the list of all the, the, the key phrases you used and the key phrases they used. Uh, these tools will show you kind of what they shared, what's missing. You know, I'm just going to go to all. Give me all 247 of them, right? I'll take every one of those. And, and there's an export button. You know, now that I, you know, my eyes get big when I see export buttons, I click the export button and I download that to a CSV. And here's the file. There's columns in here you probably don't need. Uh, I find it interesting to leave in the CPC column. You might want to do some interesting analysis on here, but this is the keyword the keyword performance for your homepage and your competitors' homepages. So we're going to upload that, and here's the prompt. You are an expert SEO and marketing data analyst. I'm giving you keyword data showing the SEO performance of your homepage compared to the keyword performance of three competitors. Can you analyze? It does a fine job analyzing. Now I'm going to give it a goal. Your goal is to revise the home page to rank for more of the phrases that you do not rank for, but the competitors do. Similar to that first one we did, right? It's like, what don't I rank for yet? And I want to give it that and then help it indicate relevance and suggest edits based on that. What additional commercial intent key phrases are the best opportunities for our home page based on the ranking of the competition? It actually did a lovely job of this. These are some pretty useful phrases, not bad. I'm quite happy. These are obviously keyword gaps. These are obviously opportunities. My page was missing these. Now, draw a chart. I love this one. I do this a lot. Just ask it, just see what it does. Draw a chart visualizing the relative size of the opportunity of the top 10 key phrases in this analysis. It invents a new metric, opportunity score, which is a blended metric combining search volume, keyword difficulty, and the CPC dollar value of these phrases which is like the heat, it's like the likelihood of conversion. Like I really, you know, it's fun to mix that into an SEO uh, metric. Um, so what it comes back with, and we could edit this list, right? We could give it a more specific list. If I was spending more time with this, I would refine it or maybe tell it exactly what to focus on. Uh, it comes back with this nice color-coded chart. Uh, it looks good at a glance until you see like there's actually a misspelling in there. Uh, review this carefully. Uh, and then refine that to where you get, okay, this is the list of key phrase opportunities. This is what I want to focus on. Uh, but now I'm going to copy in the home page. Here's the prompt. Here's a copy of our home page. Apply your SEO expertise in writing three additional paragraphs that target these high opportunity score phrases. Right? I wanted to incorporate each key phrase a maximum of two times because it'll do terrible keyword stuffing if you don't stop it. And then use a bunch of the closely related phrases. Right? I want to do good semantic SEO. Highlight the key phrases in the copy. Here it is. Uh, it needs editing, right? Let's work on this. But you get the idea. It was a useful exercise. It was keyword gap analysis based on my real world competitors, evaluating my own page against its keyword relevance for those gaps. And I find this to be a useful type of analysis. Okay, I could keep going. I have many more of these. I'll have to stop now. We'll make another video. Maybe I'll do part two of this AI for SEO thing because there's like, I did like, what, three or four now? I've got like nine or 10. Um, again, Andy from Orbit Media, hope this was helpful. If you know someone else who's uh, looking for creative ways to use AI to get better results from digital marketing, specifically SEO, pass this along, we'd be grateful. Uh, and uh, 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 subscribe and all the usual stuff, like and comment if there's something you'd like us to talk about here. Um, but uh, these are fun to make and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.